Hello, I'm DMXL, and this is a one year into Eorzea. This is an update to the GameStop review, 100% unofficial, um, to sort of bring it up to date as to what the game has done over the course of the year it's been out. So, how this is going to work is I'm going to play the original review, and as he hits a point that I think has been changed or needs to be mentioned or updated, uh, I will speak about it. Let's get right down to it. Unless you've got the patience of Job or some kind of masochist, you shouldn't play Final Fantasy XIV. Its problems are so vast that I could spend hours talking about them. The awful interface, the recycled content, the stringent limits on questing, the useless maps, the stupid market ward, these issues and dozens more constantly have you asking that age-old question, what were they thinking? There's so much wrong with this massively multiplayer role-playing game that what's right gets buried under the rubble. The visual technology is great, the flexible class system is a great idea, and there are some pretty cutscenes to gawk at. But that stuff is wasted on Final Fantasy XIV, which requires a lot out of you, but gives back so little in return. This isn't fun, it's work. Once you get through the awful and convoluted account sign-up process and deal with the sluggish patcher, you might actually start getting excited. Character creation showcases the slick character models and there are a number of attractive races and disciplines to choose from. Your excitement might even grow once you start the game and get greeted with an attractive series of cutscenes that show off the impressive graphics engine. But things go downhill in a major way once you take control of your character. You're constantly left asking questions like, how do I know where to go next? Where are the market wards? How do I find out which vendor sells which items? All right. So there was a lot of issues that he mentioned before, but he's going to repeat them again later in the video. So I'm not covering them there, just letting, letting him speak. But uh, this is the first one right here is, where do you go? Where are the market retainers and or market wards and which vendor sells what? So in the recent, most recent patch, 1.19, this is the second biggest patch in 14 history. Well, I'd say it's the biggest, but they did 1.18 1.19, back-to-back, the two biggest patches in uh, 14th history at this point in time. And in 1.19, they added in a plethora of tutorials for the user. So many new tutorials uh, that'll tell you exactly pretty much what everything does, um, you know, all the explain all the classes, etc. Uh, so definitely, they definitely did improve, you know, where, where are you going right as you start the game? Because that was something, an issue I had is, well, where do I go? Because I have absolutely no clue. But the new tutorials ex definitely explain this, and they've been actually working over the course of uh, the year to make it better for newer players to get into the game. Now, a big issue that he is, I think, going to bring up one more time is the fact of, well, which, which vendor sells what? Um, and I'm going to cover this now so I don't have to later. Basically, uh, vendors, they all, every vendor has an icon in front of their stalls. He's going to say that they don't, but they do. They have ever since launch. I guess he didn't notice it. Every vendor has an icon in front of their stalls. Usually in the form of a, uh, of a sign or what they have laid out. It's very obvious what they all sell. Um, the only thing is you have to sort of pay attention. So if you see a lot of wood in front of, in front of someone's stall, chances are they're woodworkers and they're going to be selling things like ash lumber or ash logs rather. Um, or oak logs or walnut log logs or whatever. If you see wood in front of them, that's what they're doing. If you see a lot of armor sets, chances are that's an armor fitter stall. So they're going to have things for you to buy in, in relation to uh, armor to wear. Um, it's very, very sort of straightforward, but from a traditional standpoint of an MMORPG, it may seem confusing because we're sort of in the sense where um, I want to go to like two different stalls or three different stalls in World of Warcraft, for instance, and they have everything I need. I don't want to have to go to all these guys. Um, but it sort of makes more sense. It's, it, it sort of simplifies the, the process of buying. If you want this, go here. If you want this, go there. Um, so he, his issue is, well, I don't know which, which place sells which. I believe in one of the tutorials in the beginning, they do cover this. I'm not 100% certain on this, but I do believe they do. If not, it's fairly obvious which sells what. Just look at what they have out and look at their icons. It's, it's pretty obvious. It will take you some time getting used to, but in the end, I think you're going to prefer it being like this. Uh, and that's simply because, well, it makes a lot more sense. If I need this, I'll go here. Um, you don't have to think, well, maybe this guy sells this item or this guy sells this item. Maybe when you're starting the game, yes. But after a few hours, you should have a pretty good grasp of how things go down. Why can't I open my inventory with a single key press? From the very All moment right. you start, Final Fantasy XIV seems... So why can't you open up your inventory with a single key press? You couldn't at launch, but you can now. It's not default, 
should be, it's not default, um, but you can go into the settings and set an icon or set a button for your inventory and for a lot of different things. There's a lot of different options for your keyboard uh, settings now. So for me, I have inventory to be I. I have my journal to be J. That makes sense to me. I have my character info, or for my character um, skill bars and skills. That's K. My character sheet is C. Um, I've set all of these keys myself. The game doesn't have them set automatically, which is a bit of a disappointment, but at the same time, um, it wasn't at the game at launch, so they sort of added this after the fact. Hopefully, it will get, uh, it won't be default soon. This is the last patch they did implement a second keyboard setting, um, which added in, um, a different way the keyboard functions. So hopefully they'll continue doing this and, and, and making it very standard for a key to be, you know, your inventory instead of having to go to the menu, then click inventory. But uh, this is in the game now. As if it goes out of its way to make you hate it. At first, you might think this is because the game's complexity requires that interacting with it be this dumb and hospitable. But in actuality, there's a very simple game lying underneath. Let me give you a few examples of the insane number of failings the game thrusts upon you. The interface is terrible and sluggish. You have to make a number of clicks and key presses to do something as simple as opening your inventory. There aren't hot... Okay, so this has been fixed. The As you saw right there, the inventory, he went uh, to menu and clicked inventory, and that took like a second or two to show up. It's now instantaneous. They've done a lot of uh, optimizations to the interface. This is by and large because... Uh, the, the entire shit, like the project management shifted from one group of people to another group of people. And this, this new group of people made it a priority to make the interface very, very snappy um, and very, very intuitive. So what, what they did is they tried to make it so it takes as few clicks as possible to do something specific. So before, uh, for instance, if I wanted to go and start crafting a whole bunch of one item for a lave, a guild lave, which is a questing, the questing system in the game, um, it would maybe take five clicks per per craft but now it knows that you have to make this other you have it, it knows that you have the materials to make a product and that you want to make another one because you're doing a, a quest for it so it'll say do you want to do another one you click yes it automatically does everything for you so what became so what was four or five clicks is now one click and that's just one example they've simplified it so much that I really don't even remember it being bad anymore I mean uh, it was bad obviously um, but I can't I, I don't remember the exact faultings of, of or failings of what it was back then because I'm just so used to it working as it should now. It's very, very snappy. It's not 100% perfect. Um, it's still designed for sort of a gamepad, as, as, the, as this guy will mention, um, but they are working on a keyboard and mouse interface, and that should really make the interface very, very nice. Um, unfortunately, it's not out, but the new interface is very, very tolerable for keyboard and mouse. I really don't mind it. Um, the interface, I'm not fighting with the interface anymore like I used to keys for basic things like targeting the closest enemy or switching to a different weapon set if you want to um there is oh well i'll let this play real fast hold up quick way to do these things you have to create macros which requires you to know a variety of text commands why doesn't the game use standard hotkeys for these things who knows all right so um there is a, a way to target the closest enemy you just hit tab it targets the closest enemy first uh and then it will start cycling through all the enemies in the area um, this has been in the game since release. I, again, I don't know why he didn't know this. Um, maybe he just overlooked it. Maybe he didn't really thoroughly play the game or not. Um, it was in the game since release. Uh, as for the shortcuts and the hockeys and all that, um, there are so many weapon sets in the game that usually when I'm switching between a weapon set, I'm also wanting to switch out my skills. And so a macro, in my opinion, in this situation, once you learn the three or so basic macros, which is like slash equip, uh, slash E action, which is to equip an action, and slash... Uh, actually, I think there's only two. Yeah, the two main the two main macros. Once you learn those two macros, um, you're going to prefer macros over doing what he suggested. Simply because I can create one button that does ten different things. And I can completely change up my character in ten seconds by pressing this one button and waiting for all the actions to play out. So, macros are actually a superior method. You just need to, get, you need to learn them. Um, there are plenty of tutorials on the internet on how to use the macros. As I said, there's only two actions or the, that are really popular. I only know two actions, and I love them. Uh, I love that system because of it. So, you can get past the fact that there's not like, you can't just automatically say, equip these two weapons when I do this, um, and you have to you actually have to uh, write two lines of code for that. Um, you're going to actually prefer macros over that. My personal opinion, but I think most people who have played the game feel that way. We would not want it to be, as this guy said. 
plug in a controller and the interface starts to make a little sense, but you have to manually configure your gamepad in a utility that's separate from the main game, the same way you have to customize your graphics settings. The map is an abomination. You can't zoom in and out or use the mouse to scroll. You can't set waypoints, and your story objective is listed on a separate but equally awful map that gives you no sense of where you are in relation to where you need to go. Okay. Um, you can move the mouse, or you can move the map by the mouse now, and you can also move it by the arrow keys. Uh, as for the, you can't set waypoints yet, which is a bit disappointing, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, and as for the, uh, the separate map that you can unfurl and look at, uh, that shows you where your objective is, it now actually does show you, if you're on that particular map, it'll show you where you are in relation to it. On top of that, it tells you exactly where you need, like, exactly the location of that, of, of where you need to go. So you can open up your main map and, and see it from there if you need to. But, um, it's really not that big of a deal, um... As soon as you learn the areas of the game, it's pretty pretty easy. Most vendors aren't labeled, and only a few stalls have signs indicating what they sell. If you want to buy something, and tell you remember who sells what, you have to click on all the merchants to see if they might have what you need. Oh, and I stopped the video by accident. Whoops. But, uh, that is not a valid statement anymore, as I've said. Just trying to find... Okay, we're right here. Uh... That is not a valid statement anymore. As I said, once you get the idea of... Okay, this guy, you see right here, this guy's selling leather equipment. Um, this guy's going to have a leather, uh, he's going to have the, a very common symbol for leather working in front of him. And he's going to have a whole bunch of leather products just stretched out across in a, a table right in front of him. It'll be very obvious that this guy sells leather. So if you need a Dodo Leather Spetch, or yeah, Dodo Leather Spetch right there, um, you know this guy's going to sell it because he obviously sells only leather objects. Pretty simple. Might have what you need. You can buy from retainers, which are player-controlled characters that act as storefronts, but that involves cycling through every single one to see what they're selling. This incredible waste of time could have been avoided with an auction house, or at least some way to search for your needed items. <laughs> and I stopped the video again. Um, right about here. Okay, so, I need to start hitting pause. Uh, you can search the market wards now. Um, there is a search feature, and when you search for something, you can say, I want this item. Then you go to the particular market ward that person uh, that the people are in there are selling that, and there's a pink star over everyone who's selling that particular item. So there is a way to search it now. It's really negligible. Um, an auction house would still be awesome, but it's not that big of a deal. Most people are really really fine with the way it currently is. Well, characters that act as storefronts, but that involves cycling through every single one to see what they're selling. This incredible waste of time could have been avoided with an auction house, or at least some way to search for your needed items. An auction house is apparently on its way, but for now, you need to deal with the worst possible solution to a need that's been figured out and polished up in other similar games for many years. These are but a tiny number of issues in a game absolutely loaded with them. When you finally start making your way around, you discover that there's really not a lot to this place. In the long stretches between story quests, you take short standalone missions, and you're limited to eight of them every 36 hours, which is insane. All right, so, um, touch about this. Uh, this issue has been completely abolished, for the most part. Um, you still, you get actually only four lays per 12 hours now, uh, versus, I think it was, you said eight for 32, so you get about, uh, t uh, 10 per 32 now. Um, but these actually stack. The, like these, you get four, uh, four per twelve hours that stack up to ninety nine. So if you're not playing for a week, you're going to come back and have like seventy things you can do. That's way more than you do in, in in the course of a night. But on top of that, they've been adding in side quests. So there's those to do. And there's, they've also added in the grand companies and things like caravan missions, beastman tribes. There are raids in the game now. There's two raids. They're working on two more raids that'll be out pretty soon. Um, they just got done with the Ifrit battle, which is sort of like uh, the big, big, big boss battle thing to the game, which is a really awesome battle sequence. Um, they're adding in lots of stuff to do now. There's so many things to do. Uh, uh, for the past three days, I've been playing 14 um, since this patch, and I haven't even bothered. I did like one lave quest. Um, I, my laves have been storing up. I've only been doing side quests and things like that. There's a lot of extra stuff to do now. At launch, there wasn't. That why That's why it was a huge complaint back then that you can only do eight of these every 32 hours, because other than that, it was just grinding, or doing, you know, trying to do story quests, which you got every few levels. 